After the announcement of iPad OS 15, there's a lot of complaint coming from the current M1 iPad Pro user and the user is thinking of getting one. If the iPad OS 15 has a significant upgrade, they will fully utilize the power of the M1 with the extra RAM and power. But no. During the WWDC 2021 last week, there's nothing but disappointment. Check out my reaction video, links in the description below. I even saw some user think of returning their M1 iPad Pro and get the 2020 or 2018 model instead. Returning it is one thing, you can get your original model back. But selling it, you might suffer some loss in the process. So hear me out. It is an undeniable fact that the upgrade shown in the presentation is underwhelming for all of us iPad Pro users, where it can only be considered a quality of life upgrade where it's easier to use multitasking, quick note, and so on. And if you compare iOS and iPadOS 15, there's not much different. And here I thought the reason Apple separate iOS and iPadOS is because iPad could do a lot more with its extra screen and power. But I guess I'm wrong. Nonetheless, it's just a naming part. So I digress. That being said, it does not mean that I don't appreciate what Apple did to iPadOS this year. In fact, all the upgrade is welcome. From a much better multitasking with lower learning curve, app library, better widget that we can place anywhere on the home screen, quick note, and that's it. Those are the highlight feature for iPadOS 15. Can you feel my disappointment? Just a little? I'm sure Apple did a lot of local upgrade from security to performance. But those things aren't going to excite everyone. But there's one safe and grace that Apple could do to overcome all of this. And it's to introduce some pro level apps to the App Store. I've been thinking that the probability of Apple introducing their pro level apps such as Final Cut Pro to iOS has been greatly increased with the existence of M1 iPad Pro, which essentially is a new iMac in different form. So there's no reason why the iPad couldn't even support it. Even the current video editor that I've been using for over a year, Numa Fusion, has been editing 4K video without breaking a sweat. So is your M1 iPad Pro just an overpriced and overpowered video consumption device? Since you are expecting Apple to introduce some significant upgrade to iPadOS and Pro Web Apps in some way, yes. The M1 is benchmarked so high that I don't think any software have a problem running on it. But all those power is wasted without a proper software or application to take advantage of it. Even though the disappointment, I still think you should keep the M1 instead of going for 2020 or 2018 model. Why? As I said before in my previous video comparing the 2020 and 2021 model, the performance increase is so huge between these two devices that even if you can save some money going for the 2020 model, the 50% increase in power is nothing to sneeze off, which equal to a more future-proof, and I mean more future-proof device. Software will get powerful in the future, it will take some loss of more processing power. Just like in some version of iOS in the past, all the devices get dropped because of the performance issue. So by getting the M1 iPad Pro, all this compatibility issue will poof, all gone, lasting you for years, assuming you don't break it. It is all up to Apple whether they want to introduce their pro level apps into the iOS app store. But there are plenty of pro level apps developed for iOS, such as Numa Fusion or Affinity Photo. You can utilize the power of the M1 chip. Not all, but you will be able to upgrade without skipping a frame. So, in my opinion, the M1 iPad Pro is still a worthwhile buy as long as you are using it to do some heavy lifting tasks that will use their power. If you are just using it for video consumption, the iPad Air will be your choice. As a wise man said before, don't buy a product based on its future promise. And here is even worse, based on your own expectation. And that's it. Hope this video helped and thanks for watching. Ciao!